everyone. Thank you so much for coming back to our channel. If it is your first time, I kindly ask that you please subscribe and let's get labor smart with Rich until right. So we are going to continue with our journey with retrenchments. And today we are touching on section 189A um, of the Labor Relations Act. And these are large scale retrenchments, all right? So um, remember that section 189 and 189A are meant to be read in conjunction with one another and with the processes starting with the consulting consultation process all right so um now the only difference is that it's on a larger scale and when a retrenchment is on a larger scale believe you me there have to be certain rules that are going to ensure that this process this process rather goes smoothly all right if there are a large number of people who are getting retrenched in your workplace this kind of retrenchment probably applies to you all right so if your employer has more than 50 employees and people are getting retrenched let's say um, approximately 10 people are getting retrenched this particular section applies to you because it's on a larger scale all right and um, we are about to establish um, on which criteria are you gonna fall under all right what i'm going to do is i'm just going to speak in general um i will include all the particular details in terms of who really applies to this section um but just to give you an overall idea if your employer employs more than 50 people and for example 10 people are being retrenched this section applies to you so let's get down to it and let's get all the details that are necessary for us to be very informed in terms of this retrenchment. So now, um, the main difference here between section 189 and section 189A is that section 189A provides the parties with the option of requesting a third party who would now become a facilitator during this consultation process, all right? This facilitator might be requested by the employer or the other consulting party which is representing um, the employees all right remember you, you should know that the difference here between section 189 and section 189a is that section 189a actually provides um, all these consulting parties with the option of requesting um, a third party would become a facilitator all right and it is quite important that if ever the consulting party which is representing the employees wants a facilitator they request a facilitator by the commission within 15 days of the notice that the employer has served them with all right and when all of this is done correctly then the consultation process can take place now because this is a retrenchment on a large scale um, there have to be time periods that are in place to ensure that everything runs smoothly, all right? If it happens that a facilitator has been appointed and 60 days goes without anything happening, um, in this case, the employer has the right to give notice of termination of employment to all the parties that are involved and the employees or the trade union that's representing the majority of the people who are going to be affected by this retrenchment also has the right to give notice of strike or refer the matter to the labor court all right it's possible some people are asking what happens in the case that a facilitator is not appointed okay so now in section section 189a subsection 8 deals with this circumstance once the employer has given the notice for consultation um, all the parties have 30 days period to do to do everything that needs to be done during this consultation process and before any of these parties can refer this matter for conciliation okay so unlike before where you had 60 days with 
the facilitator now you have 30 days with the facility without the facilitator all right once the 30 day period has elapsed um these these people are afforded the rights the same rights as those with the 60 days so they will have the right to give the employer will have the right to give to serve notice of termination of contracts and the employees or the trade union representing the employees they may refer the dispute um to the labor court okay so um it is it is very very important for us to to make sure that we are aware of the time frames we have in order to do things right before resorting to these last um recourses that we are afforded very very important a consulting party may not may not under any circumstance unreasonably refuse for the request of the extension of the consultation process in order for all parties to reach a mutual agreement okay so if it happens that during this consultation process the employer and the representative of the employees are not agreeing on certain things either party has the right to request that the consultation be extended or no party under any circumstances may unreasonably refuse for that extension to take place okay so um i think i have summarized the substantive and procedural fairness of this whole retrenchment process in the case whereby the employer did not follow the correct procedure in terms of the whole retrenchment process um the consulting party may approach the labor court by way of an application in a nutshell what happens is that an employer might be obliged to hold back or reinstate these employees up until they follow the correct and fair procedure um, they might be ordered to reinstate these people before that can take place um, they might be in a position to be in to pay these people compensation um so a lot can happen so it's very very important for us to ensure that everything is done accordingly and it's only fair that employees know these rights you need to know that if ever your employer did not follow the correct process you have the you have rights and it can be changed okay so um you know what it has been quite fun and quite informative for me as well so i hope that everyone finds these videos informative and if ever you do have questions by all means please ask them let's interact let's engage i'll be more than willing to make a video or respond directly to your comment but I'll be more than happy to make a video responding to these questions regarding retrenchments. Remember that it might happen to you, so it's quite important for you to be well informed before it happens. Thank you very much and let's meet again next time where we talk about misconduct and incapacity. Thank you very much guys. So um, kindly if you ever find this video informative and you like it, Press the like, subscribe to our channel, share the link with your friends and family, and let's all get labor smart with Rich Auntie. Thank you.